So thank you so much for joining us again. This is the apple pie baking demonstration with Daniela Kazaku. Daniela Kazaku is from the Republic of Moldova. It's in Eastern Europe between Romania and Ukraine. She's an English teacher. And in Moldova, she taught English at the university. In 2006, she came to the US to do her master's in teaching English as a second language. After graduation, she taught English at the Center for New Americans in Amherst. She's a dedicated to, um, to the international community in Amherst by not only teaching English, but also by helping new immigrants adjust to the new culture here in the United States. She's also a full-time mom to her nine-year-old son. Daniela loves doing crafts, cooking, and especially baking pies. Her apple pie was recently awarded the Blue Ribbon, which is first place in the Three County Fair Apple Pie Contest. Today, she's gonna to demonstrate how she makes her award-winning pie in just six easy steps. She's excited to teach you how to make a delicious and beautiful pie for the holidays. Um, and just so you all know, we're also going to have the recipe for the, um, for the pie is gonna be in the chat. So feel free to, um, to follow along to that recipe if you like. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna mute myself and Daniela, you can take it away. Hey, thank you so much, Catherine. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. I'm very excited to share with you all my baking secrets, how I make my delicious and um, beautiful apple pie. So I'm going to, first, before I, before I talk about the steps, I want to show you how my journey started uh, of pie making. So this is what uh, my Moldovan, so I, you can see my flag, um, and this is what my Moldovan apple pie looks like. Um, in Romanian, this is called placenta, which means pie, um, cumere with apples, so just apple pie. And so it's very different from what you think about apple pie. It's, it's very flaky, but uh, it has this very thin dough that you stretch very big and um, so you and you put the apples. So it's like um, uh, apple strudel that you know. Uh, uh, the the difference is that we don't put raisins uh, with the apples or nuts. We just it's just apple and sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. So this is how this is the kind of pie that I grew up with. Um, I never knew about a different um, kind and, until I came to the U.S. So my journey started in uh, 2017 when uh, a group of women uh, were, were doing a fundraiser for their church. And one of, the, one of them was Jane, is Jane, who is a, a friend um, of, he, she's the grandmother of my son's best friend. So she, she said, well, you know, uh, we need some help. So, uh, so I, I volunteered to help them uh, make a hundred pies for their fundraiser. Uh, with these women, I, uh, I learned to make pie. I watched them carefully. Everyone had a different style. And um, so this is how my journey started. And then after that, I borrowed lots of books from Amherst and Sunderland Library. So thank you libraries for all your wonderful books and your programs. Uh, and I took two classes at the American Pie Company in Copenhagen, Denmark. I lived there last year for six months and I went to this amazing American Pie Company that uh, is right in Copenhagen, in downtown Copenhagen. And, and of course, I, I made lots of pies at home, experimenting with new recipes. And these are some of the recipes, that, some of the pies that I've made. Um, so my apple pie and uh, nut pie, this one is walnut, but I also make bourbon pecan. Um, so this one is my 4th of July in the middle, uh, strawberry, blueberry, and then peach, and then strawberry rhubarb and then apple, but um, a lettuce one. And this one is an orange meringue. So the meringue is, is a Swiss meringue, uh, a little different uh, or actually quite different from what you think of meringue because this one is actually cooked on the stove. So you can pipe it like buttercream. So I made this for my birthday this year. So in 2020, so now just a few um, weeks ago, I. 
I participated and, uh, in the contest of the three county fair apple pie contest and won, uh, which was very exciting for me. And my pie was judged uh, in, for, in 10 categories. So uh, for attractiveness, for flavor, for aroma, for if, it, if it was properly sweetened, it, it was for the flakiness, if it was properly sweet, uh, for tenderness, for appropriate runover, if it was well done, and flavor. So it's quite a strict um, contest. Um, so today I'm going to uh, teach you how to make my champion apple pie in six steps. So we're going to make the crust, we're going to roll out the bottom crust, we're going to make, make the filling, we're going to roll out the top crust, assemble the, plot, the pie, we're going to bake the pie and we're going to make the rose or other cut of decoration, but these are optional, but I'm going to show you how I do it. And I hope to inspire you to make your own apple pie. I would love to see pictures of your creations. And this is my email and I'll put it in the chat. Okay, so let's get down to business. So we need two and a half cups of flour that, is, that are is, that is sifted, very important to sift the flour. Um, we need a, a bit of sugar and salt, which we're going to put in the flour. We need a quarter cup of shortening. And I use, I use an organic shortening that I like from Whole Foods. Um, I like shortening because it makes the crust flaky, um, but I also like butter. So I'm going to get my butter and I'm going to cut it up and put it in the flour. So I'm going to show you how I cube my butter. So I cut my stick in half and then in half again. And then I cut little pieces, little cubes of butter. So let's mix the sugar and the salt. And I need my I need my pastry cutter, so I had it on the dishwasher. So we're going to mix the sugar and the salt. We're going to add the the shortening. So um, now we can put the butter, the little pieces of butter, and we're going to cut in the butter. And I like this combination of butter and shortening because butter gives the flavor and shortening gives the flakiness that we want, uh, that we like so much in pie. We want it to be flaky and light. And if you just use butter, it's going to be tasty and delicious, but it's going to be heavy um, and kind of hefty. Um, if you use just shortening, it's going to be very flaky, but it's not going to have much flavor. So, there, so I like to use a combination of both butter and shortening. So, and in this, uh, in this crust, I also use an egg. I'm going to get it. So So an egg is a little unusual for pie crust, but I I like it um, it gives it just a nice flavor. And the judges from the contest really loved, loved the pie crust. 
So I thought I'd show you my weaning pie. Uh, my, my everyday crust does not contain egg. Um, this is a little uh, more special um, than, than my other pie. So, um, so to the egg, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water. And the water is ice water. So you can see some ice in the bowl. So very important to be ice cold. And I'm gonna add it to the egg. And I'm going to now, so I want, I'm looking for small pieces and I can squish some of them. So I'm looking for a crummy, not too, not too crumb, not too um, small, just pea-sized pieces of the butter. Um, and so we're going to add the liquid now. So I have the egg and the water. And with a fork, I'm just tossing the liquid and mixing a little bit at a time, not all of it at once. Just uh, a little bit at a time. So now, I, it looks like I still need a little bit more water. I have some parts of it are still dry, so you, you can see this, this, what, this part is okay, but I still have this part that is a little dry. So I'm going to add one, one tablespoon at a time of, of ice water. So just a moment, let me see where my... So one tablespoon at a time. So one, and then I mix it. And it looks like... I need maybe one or two more, it's still quite dry. And it depends on the temperature um, outside, the, the humidity, the ins inside, it depends. Um, in the winter, you will need more water than in the summer. So, so I think that's, that's good. So I think that maybe I can just add a little bit more. So oh, this is what I, I have. So all of the parts are moistened and I can feel it with my hand. And now what I need to do is just bring this into a, a ball so I don't need to overwork it. I just, all, I, all I'm gonna do is just bring this into a ball. Just make, bring it together. So just, just trying to bring it into a ball. Okay, so I think that's good. So it doesn't have to be neat, um, just, just uh, where we're gonna make two discs. So we're going to divide, I, I like to use this bench scraper to divide it. And then, Take one piece and just bring it together like this and put it in plastic wrap. And this has to be refrigerated for at least 30 minutes. And so I press it into a disc like this. And I do the same with the other. So bring it together. So and press, press. Um, so it's easier to work with it it's, if it's flat into a disc. So we're going to refrigerate this for 30 minutes. But in the interest of time, I already made a batch that we can already roll out. So. So 
So I made this dough and now we're going to roll it out. So that's our next step to roll out the bottom crust. Make some room on the counter. So we're going to flour the counter just a little bit and so my in. So I'm going to flour the the crust. So so I start by I start by just pressing with my the heel of my hand, just pressing the the disc a little bit to get it started. Um, it's, it may look like it's all cr kind of not uniform, but when you press it with your heel of your hand, it, it all comes together fine. It's, uh, it's, it's, really, it, it's really not a problem. So, so now we can, I can start rolling it. And I roll it only one direction. I push it away from me, towards me, and away from me. I don't, I don't need to go back and forth because we want uniformly uh, rolled out. We, we don't want in some parts a little thinner and in the other parts thicker. So we're going to just roll it out. Like this to go towards me and away and, and then turn. So keep turning to make a nice circle. So I'm almost, it looks like I'm almost, I'm almost done. So I take my plate. I like glass plate very much because I can see how it's, when it's baking, I can see when it's done. So um, I'm sort of going to measure. It looks like just maybe a tiny bit more, but it's, it's pretty good. So I want it just a little bit bigger than my pie plate. So it's good. So I... Fold it in half. I put it on the pie plate and gently, just just gently put it in. I, I I don't. I lift it a little bit so it's pressed against the walls of the plate, so um, so there's no air in between the crust and the walls. So and then I can take scissors or I actually do it with my hands. I just uh, get rid of the excess dough and what I do is just I fold it under so to make a neat uh, neat edge I fold I fold the the dough the crust under like this so It's interesting that when first the pie, the when when crust to, so at first many years ago when pie came from England to America, crust was inedible. It was just a vehicle for the filling. So now it's all about the crust. Now it's all people really love to eat, but it didn't used to be like that. Just uh, they would throw away the crust. So since I'm going to do a double 
double crust. I am not going to crimp this uh, bottom. It's just I'm going to leave it just like that. And again, I have to refrigerate it while I take care of the filling because I want the butter to chill again and because, because when it hits the oven, it's going to keep its nice shape, otherwise it shrinks. So we'll put this in the fridge. So now we're going to do the apples. I want to show you how I, I do the apples. So I first I wash them. So I pat, I pat them dry because I don't want excess water to get into the pie because I don't want a pool of, of water at the bottom of my, of my pie. So, so I'm going to cut. So one moment, I need to find my, my knife. And, different cutting board this is dirty so I I cut my apple in half and then in half again and I peel um, you can use a vegetable peel peel of course I not everybody can cut like this my husband cannot cut like this he's afraid <laughs> um, so but you can do it so I peel and then I slice, I slice the apple into thin, thin slices. So I have already peeled the, the rest of the apples so that we don't have to wait. Um, I put a, one tablespoon of lemon juice in, in them. And now we're going to put some sugar and a little bit of spice, of course, like me, sugar and spice, we need that. So we have the sugar and we have two tablespoons of cornstarch. Um, you can also put flour, but they, they do different things. So the corn flour, the corn starch makes a clear liquid and the, and the flour makes it just a little bit cloudy. So that's the, that's the difference. And in the recipe, you'll see two or three tablespoons, depending on how juicy your fruit, your apples are. So, so we're going to put a little bit of cinnamon and so So we're going to use a little bit of, in the sugar, so I said cornstarch I put, we're going to put a little bit of salt. Uh, it is very important, it brings out the flavor. Um, we're going to put three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. So. So then there's my cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg. Also about a, an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And an eighth of a teaspoon of uh, allspice. So we'll mix it all together. And we're going to add this to the apples and mix well. And we're going to just set it aside while we do the top crust. So we'll set this aside. So 
that's so step number four is to roll out the, the top crust. So we're going to make some roll again. So bring my top crust. Use a little bit of flour. So again, press with the heel of my hand before I start using the rolling pin. by the way with the egg is is easier easier to make than regular crust because egg is a binder and this dough comes together more easily and it's really a pleasure to work with I really love this this crust So it looks like we're almost done. It looks like it's a good size. So now is the time to be creative and think about what kind of design um, I want to make. And my favorite design is a flower, but I can also do letters or numbers depending on the occasion. If it's uh, somebody's birthday or um, if it's uh, a particular holiday. So I, this is my, my favorite part, to be creative and, and do all kinds of things. But I'll show you my, my favorite design. So we're gonna make a flower with, uh, you can use cookie cutters, you can use um, all kinds of things. But so I'm going to make a flower. So I'm gonna use a straw to make, the, so maybe, actually, maybe I'll make it a tiny bit bigger, just in case. Over the, I like it to be big enough so it just goes, goes on top of the apple. So here's the, the beginning of my flower. So I have a cookie cut in the shape of a leaf. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut out some leaves. And I'm going to refrigerate the leaves again while I, I, I assemble the pie because again, we want everything to be cold. We don't want any, the, we don't want the crust to get any warm at all. So because when it hits the oven, it's just gonna look, uh, look, not look nice. So I'm gonna put these on the plate and put in the, in the refrigerator while I assemble the pie. So here I have my butter crust. I set the oven for 425. For, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna start with that, and then we're gonna lower the temperature after 15 minutes. But so 
So now we're going to put the apples. So and I like to make a little a little amount of the apples um, because they will cook down and I want just a little bit of uh, of amount so I'm going to I think that's good. That's good. Looks good. So now I'm going to put two tablespoons of butter on the apples. Just wash my hands and there is my butter. And then we can cube it just the way we so we're going to put these little pieces of butter and just uniformly distribute them. So that's good. So now um, let's put the top crust here on, just like that. So looks like we have good. So now I'm going to fold it under again and uh, pinch it so it's connected to the bottom crust. Just uh, pinch it a little bit. Looks like this is a little too long, so I'm going to get rid of the excess. So now um, I'm going to crimp it, and the way I like to crimp it, it's just put my so my two fingers between. So I'll show you in a second. So I put my two fingers and with the, with the other one from the other hand, I just, um, I just, just uh, do this uh, so you can see to make a nice wavy pat, wavy edge. So if you do it with the other hand, it's going to be different. So you can, you can do all kinds of crimping. You can use a fork. You can use a spoon, you can uh, just leave it, leave it plain, you can uh, be creative with this, but um, the, so it looks like it's done. So the, the crimping is done. So now, uh, before we put it in the oven, we will um, do some egg wash. With the egg wash, we're going to top it. So, I have the I have the egg right here. So I'm going to use one teaspoon of uh, of water with the uh, with the egg. So my my drink. Um, So 
one teaspoon of water. So I'm going to paint it with this uh, egg wash here and sprinkle some sugar and it'll be nice and golden when it when it's ready. This is what we want. Uh, um, not a pale, not a pale pie. We want a golden, nicely golden crust. And this is what it's going to do. This egg. Okay, so that looks good. So we need a little bit of sugar and just sprinkle a little bit of sugar. But we forgot about something. I, if you, for, des for the design, you can leave it like that. It's perfect like that. But if you want to, to make it more fancy, we need to We can put the leaves back on. I forgot. Um, so we're going to also egg wash them and just uh, put the leaves back. But it's totally optional here. Just this is up to you, really. Um, so. And also a little bit of sugar on the cutouts. And voila, it's ready to go in the oven. And there it is. So I'm going to put it in the oven for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes, and after 15 minutes, I'm going to lower the temperature to 350. So now I'm going to make the rows to show you how to make a fancy, a fancy rose so you can impress all your friends for Thanksgiving if you're going to make one for Thanksgiving. So. So for that, we're going to use the leftover. So remember, we got rid of the excess, and this is my excess crust. So I'm going to use a, a, a circle around cookie cutter to make two circles out of this leftover dough. Let's put a little bit more flour. And so the rows, um, the reason the rows did not go in with the, with, the, with, the, with the pie is that they cook at different rates. So the, this has to be baked separately after the pie comes out of the oven. So that's why I, I, I didn't make it um, and put it with, with the pie. So. The, uh, this will bake much faster, so we, um, we we can bake them together. So here's my round cookie cutter. So I'm going to make two circles, and I'm going to cut them in half. And I'm going to stack them, so stack them like this. So I don't know if you can see, but I'll show you in just a moment. So the same in circles, we're going to stack them like this. And I'm going to pinch so they stay together. So I'm going to pinch one side. And I'm going to roll it.
and there you go that's my little rose and we're going to pinch the the bottom so the the petals don't fly away and we're going to open the petals just just like that and there you go you have a, i have a little rose and the same thing i would do i would egg egg wash and a little bit of sugar and bake it at 375 or maybe 350 to 375 for about 15 more minutes uh, um, later so but i have to put it in the fridge again and so that's it and you can do more you have a but if you have leftover dough, you can do more cookie with a cookie cut. You can be creative with cutouts and you can do other designs. You can write numbers, you can for birthdays, or you can do other things. Um, so I'm going to show you the finish because we don't have time to wait for the pie to be uh, ready. Uh, I'm going to show you how it comes out from the oven. So this is. This is how it comes out, nicely golden. And we're going to cut out, I'm going to cut out a piece so you can see how it is inside. So let's see, where's my good knife? So, so it's flaky shadows of the of the knife which shadows so the so just a moment so there it is so there is my 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 pie i don't see too much juice coming out it's not it's uh um let's see what the taste is what it tastes like so it's not too sweet i don't like um too sweet so it's perfectly sweetened it's flaking in the it's light it's absolutely delicious. So I hope you can try to make your own very soon.